Hello, everybody. <laughs> I didn't think that I was going to make a video today. Uh, but I was just watching the movie about Solomon. And it reminded me of two very precious, precious, precious visions that God gave me. And I wanted to share these visions because... I'm just at a loss for words. Um, I want to share these visions because I know that these visions was special. They meant a lot to God. And for him to sh share that with me, one of the visions had me bawling for like over an hour. Uh, but before I talk about the visions, I want to talk about the secret place. The Bible says that Holy Spirit help me help me bear witness to the Father and to the Son and to the Word. Help me tell this this visions and help me speak of the Father in a clear, concise way. Help me write the vision and make it plain so that he that read it can run with it. Help me speak in a way where the body can be edified, oh Lord God. Have mercy on me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And have mercy on all of those who are watching. Heal us all, God, and be merciful unto us. Rectify all books in heaven and Write our names in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Whew. All right. I want to talk about the secret place because a lot of people, they um, tend to, you know, discredit people when you, when you begin to tell them, Oh, God showed me this. And God showed me that. And God told me this. And God told me that. The first thing people tend to do is feel doubt. Nah. You, you're you just, you're, you're making it up. You read it somewhere. You saw it somewhere. I literally had someone tell me that before. Someone very close to me. God, I've had my family not always receive me because some of the things that God tell me but yet they are all true and so I want to say this it's nothing special about me it's nothing special about me it's just the word of God is true the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a secret place. And uh, I was blessed to... Um, I was blessed to be in this place with God. But I want to tell you, it's not it's not something that was so great about me that the Lord allowed me to be in this secret place. It came from within my heart. I used to be uh in the eyes of God, I was uh, the biggest sinner. I I I did everything imaginable. Under the sun, I did it all. It was even in 2019, I wouldn't even say the, the name Jesus. Was it 2018, 2019? I went a whole year and wouldn't even say his name. God, I, I, I've done everything. I've done everything, and yet the Lord, he just, he, he, he cleaned me. He picked me up in my lowest of low places. 
the Lord to y'all. He cleaned me up. And the Lord began to teach me himself. The first thing that he let me experience was his heart. When we sin, it hurts God. It hurts him like it hurts him like as if your lover cheats on you with your bestie. And these people are in your face every day, all day. And you find out that not only did they cheat together behind your back but they been lying to you the whole time and what's worse than that everybody knew but you so that pain that you feel that betrayal in that moment that hurt that heartache that's how he feels when we sin and when he when he allowed me to feel that I I I, I wept I, I could I couldn't believe that I her God on that level. And it was at that moment that I said to the Lord, if, if you will allow me to climb in your lap, I will not come down. And he did. And I saw a vision of me sitting on a lap of God. And he was so big like a giant. He was so big that I looked like a small child. And I sat there. I sat there in the spirit with the Lord. I, I cleaved to him. I cleaved to him. I had an incident um, one day. Um, like I said, it had a year had went by, and I wouldn't even say the name Jesus. I had gotten in all of this, what if God's not real crap, even though I had grew up with the Lord all my life. I mean, since a small child. <laughs> But I had gotten, I allowed myself to slip into the seducing spirit that, uh, what if Jesus is not real, you know? And I've been shouting this out to the world all my life, and I can't even prove it. You know, I just, I feel bad if I'm putting that energy out there without no proof. And I said, in order to just save myself, I'm just not going to say his name. Um, I'm just not going to say the name. And so a year went by, and I, I stopped saying the name. And the Lord gives men gifts liberally um, as he choose and for the reason that he choose. And the Lord gave me a lot of spiritual gifts. It's like he just said, you can have whatever gift you like. I don't know why he gave me so many, but he did. And one of these gifts that God gave me is when I am in the presence of evil, a strong uh, uh, entity, my stomach will begin to, to, to turn on the inside like a ball of electricity. You know how you touch your hand to one of those uh, electricity balls and it begins to spark and all of the things come off like that? That was that happens to me when I'm in the presence of a of a of an evil entity, and so it had been a year that I had not said the, the Lord's name. When I got a job and I was working with a coworker, one day we began to have a conversation, and uh, I didn't even intend to say all this in this video, but we began to have a conversation, and she began to talk about how she was raised. Uh, as a conjurer of, of, of evil of, of evil spirits, and I was like, "Wow, I'm just the exact opposite of you. I was raised in the light, and all my life, I've been with God since the age of four. Uh, and so we begin to talk, and I didn't think anything of it, and I did not judge her. I just let her speak. But it was a week after that that I began to have these entities attack me every night, every night in my sleep." Every night, every night in my sleep. And I was, it got so bad that I was not sleeping anymore. And they would do things like just snatch the cover off of me. Um, just, I don't want to get into detail, just stuff. And one night, it got so bad that my stomach began to 
to have that electric energy in it. And this entity, it was two. It was one that was like a little imp. Because I can see things in the spirit. I can't see in detail unless it's a vision. But when it's dealing with a spirit, I can, I can sense an overlay of the energy. You see what I'm saying? So I know that that was a little one, a imp, about the size of a three-year-old. A imp, an evil spirit, I don't know what it was, but it was a little one that was doing all of the tormenting, snatching my covers and doing all the things. But just in my closet was the biggest demon you could ever think. And I knew this. I, it was like we was eyeballing each other. And I began to speak to it and tell it to get out of my room. And I was like, I was trying to be strong. And I was like, I'm not going to share my body with you. Get out of my room. I was trying to talk tough because, like I said, I've always walked with the Lord before. And so entities, you're going to you're gonna have these encounters. So it was nothing new. Usually I just tell them to get out. I'm not going to share my body with you, blah, 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 blah. And you should be firm. And that's usually the gist of it. But this day was different. Now, keep in mind, it had been a year and I hadn't even said the name Jesus. I had, as if you say, gotten lost. I come off the path and I was lost. And this demon was so big that the energy in my stomach could not contain it. It went from a ball the size of a golf ball to the size of um, a... a a volleyball, and, and it is just, my stomach literally began to churn in knots and knots and knots, and fear began to grip me because no matter what I was saying, this thing was not leaving me. And finally, I confessed I needed to tell somebody that this thing was in my room and that I wasn't sleeping and that this has been going on. And finally, to make a long story short, I uh, reached out to a friend and I told him what was going on. And he believed me. And he said, you need to call on the name of Jesus. And you need to pray right now. And I was too ashamed to say, oh, I hadn't used that name in a year. But he kept insisting, you need to pray. And you need to pray right now. So after I hung up with him, I literally kid you not. I humbly said, Justice, Jesus, if you are real, rebuke these demons for me. And instantly, instantly, the pain in my stomach went from about a good 200 down to 100, from 100 down to 50, from 50 down to 20, from 20 down to 10. And I could just feel it was, it was a, Instantly, it was like he was standing there the whole time just waiting for me to ask him. And from that moment, I've never left him. And the Lord began to teach me. He began to teach me himself. A lot of what I was learning wasn't, a, wasn't coming from preachers. It was coming from the Lord teaching me. Um, first thing he asked me to do was to keep the Sabbath. And I began to keep the Sabbath day. I didn't know much about it. Didn't know if it was Saturday or Sunday. But I began to do my research and I began to go back into the Bible. What was Moses and him doing? And the Sabbath was Saturday. And I contacted my pastor and I said, did you know the Sabbath day was on Saturday? But Constantine changed it. And she said, yes, that's the first thing we learned in Bible school uh, uh, as a minister, and I'm praying that you you go and you go to Bible school and, 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 you know, and you, you'll find that out. And I said to her, if indeed the Sabbath is on a Sunday, a Saturday, I cannot worship on a false Sabbath. And I never set foot in church again on a Sunday. And from that moment on, God began to teach me his ways. The Lord, after the Sabbath, the Lord asked me, keep the Passover. I had absolutely no idea the Passover. What do you do? How do you keep it? I didn't know anything about it. And the Lord began to teach you, just calm down. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. And I kept the Passover. 
And then the Lord said, keep Rosh Hashanah. And I didn't know anything about Rosh Hashanah, but luckily it was a church down the street from me. And they was keeping this day. And I kept Rosh Hashanah with them. And then Yom Kippur. And the Lord just began to bless me so immensely. And I said to him, finally I said, after a year of this, I said, God, Enoch walk with you. And in the cool of the day, Adam and Eve, they walked through you. I said, I literally said these words. I want to be one with you. I want to be on one accord and I want to be as close as I possibly humanly can within the flesh. I want to be one with you and I want to walk with you. I want to know you like I want to know you. Uh, and I'm saying all this to say the visions that I'm about to share with you. I want you to know that it is nothing special about me. That's different from you. It is the first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And I, I have no other gods before me. Just that one commandment alone if you keep that one commandment, the Lord said, there is none more greater than that one. If you could keep that one commandment and you begin to praise the Lord, praise the Lord, the slowly the Lord began to teach me how to pray, how to pray. The Lord began to teach me how to pray for the things of the spirit and to stop praying for the things of the flesh. Stop praying for jobs. Stop praying for cars. Stop praying for um. Um, just things to live and begin to pray for the things of the spirit. And I begin to do this. And as I begin to do this, I believe I slipped right into a secret place because the visions the Lord began to show me. I can't make you believe him. I'm not going to try to make them, you believe them, but I'm bearing the Lord witness that his word is true. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. When you begin to praise the Lord, you could do it in your house. All these two times that I'm about to tell you each time I was in my living room. He, the Bible says the Lord and praises the habits of it. the the Lord inhabits the praise of His people. That means He dwells in it. He lives in those praise. He's right there, and He loves it. He loves it. And, and, and when you begin to praise God. The, the 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 fleshly side of you drop off and your spirit man begin to 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 spark and catch fire and I'm telling you this because it's true there was a time I prayed to God and it felt like I had been at the gym working out I was hot and sweaty and my shirt was wet with sweat and the Lord I was praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and finally I didn't want to say I prayed probably like an hour. And after I was done praying, I could feel the spirit lifting off of me. So I was just about to walk away. I was starting to head toward the kitchen when, boom, I just felt the spirit just on me, on me. And I was instantly in a vision. And this is what I saw. And you can take my word or you cannot. It's up to you. In this vision, I saw the stone roll away from the viewpoint of Christ inside the tomb. And I gathered that Christ was sitting on something. Like, I don't know what they laid him on, but I don't think that they laid him on the ground. I I gathered it was something that they his body was on top of something because he was sitting on something. And the stone rolled from right to left like this. And the stone was perfectly round, like well, how you know how they make those big circular wheels of cheese? The stone was circular around like that, and it was white. It was it was all white, and the stone rolled from right to left like that. And then everything got dark, and then everything got dark, and I was like, oh, and I just didn't think nothing of it. I just began to. I just started by praying again. And as I was praying, I saw Jesus. 
I saw Jesus when he went down into the underworld, when he was down in hell. And this is exactly what I saw. I saw him in his regular clothes. Jesus had on his robe. And it, where he was was dark. Because all the light, there was a big glowy light all around him, all around his head, almost what you, what we would call a halo, but it was just the shape of his head and it was going all around his shoulders and his robe. I don't know why I'm always fixated on his robe. And he had his hands out like this. It's like, I don't know if he was talking or what he was doing, but he just had his hands out like that. And, um... When I come out of the vision, the first thing that he impressed upon me was death could not hold him. So he did not have to wear dead clothes. You know, the Bible says that when he called Lazarus forth from the grave, Lazarus was, was still wrapped in his dead clothes. But Jesus was able to be there in that place as himself in his robe, in all of his glory, because there was really technically no charges against him. He was an innocent man, but he took on the sins of the world. But in him, there was no fault. So death could not hold him. He did not have to wear the garments of death. He was himself and his hands was out and extended. And when he showed me that, I just, I just cried because I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just a little bitty person. Like you would, you would, you would show that to me, like little old me. I'm just a, I'm just a little no, nobody person. <laughs> And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And I remember the Bible says when Jesus, when Jesus was in hell, he, he preached to the captives and I'm guessing that's the time that maybe his hands was out like that because it's both of his hands was extended out like that. And then there was another day I was praying and I was laying prostrate before the Lord. I was just laying flat out before him. Did you realize God is a king? He is the king of the earth. And when you go before the king, you, you reverence him. When you begin to humble yourself before the Lord, and when you begin to, do you know, I ask the Lord, how, how are you feeling today? Because you know God has feelings. He has emotions just like you and I. When it got to the point where I start asking God, what can I do for you today? How are you feeling today? I would ask God, what's going on in heaven today? What's going on in the spirit world? I talk to him as if he's sitting right next to me. But when you begin to reverence God as a king, and when you begin to worship him and lay before him, prostrate, the Lord will honor you as a king. This particular day, I was laid out prostrate. And I was praising the Lord and praising him and praising the Lord, praising the Lord. And I got up and I was instantly in a vision. And in the vision, I saw a blue sky. It was all blue. But at the time that I was in the vision, I did not think anything was strange. But now as I'm about to tell you this, this seems strange because in the vision, it was like the sky came down all the way to the ground because everything in front of me was just a blue sky. It's like I was looking at a big screen of the sky. And the Lord just did like this, like that, you know, like this, like he waved his hand across the sky. And you know how you take a, a match to plastic and it begins to melt and, and just come apart like that? The sky began to go in on itself and it just began to come apart like that and when this I believe that that was the Lord removing the veil and when the Lord removed the veil I saw the temple of Solomon I saw the temple of Jerusalem and I'm staring at this temple oh my God let me just tell you it was pristine white the stone was pristine white and I saw no cracks, no lines. It just went straight up like that. And then it began to dip like this and go up more, like dip up like a castle. But what caught my eye the most was it had gold 
all over the whole tips of the top. It was so much gold. And the gold was so, so shiny. And my eyes, I don't know why, I was just fixed on the right-hand side of it. I, I didn't even begin to, my eyes never made it down to taking a door to see if it had golden knobs or not. Because I was just... I was just in awe at the amount of gold that was all over this temple. And I said the dumbest thing. Oh, let me tell you. The gold was so shiny that the sunlight, you could see the sun like sparkling like off the tip of it. And I think in my ignorance, I said the dumbest thing. Because my mind was thinking like temple on earth, like. Not temple in heaven. I, it hadn't dawned on me. God moved the veil back. And you're like, he, he's letting me see behind the veil. So my brain was just thinking like temple, the temple on earth. And I said the dumbest thing. I said the first thing that came to my mind. And I was like, God, they didn't try to rob this? Like, like steal from this? Because on earth, if men would see something like that, they would they would definitely rob that. They would definitely like try to destroy it, like would desecrate it, not even caring that it's a sacred place. It was just that much gold, but the gold was perfectly, it was like it was melted on to the tips of the trim all around the top, all around the top. And that was beautiful. I, I I don't think I would ever see anything like that. I even went back after that vision and I pulled up Jerusalem and I pulled up the Temple of Solomon and I tried to uh, look at it. And though it was shaped the same, it bore no resemblance. I didn't see no gold. I didn't see, I didn't even see the splendor of the smooth white stone. I believe that God was showing me that the temple of Solomon is also in heaven. The exact same copy on earth as it is in heaven. And it is in immaculate condition. It is beautiful. It is pristine. I, I never seen nothing like that. I never seen nothing like that. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for them. I'm telling you. That was just a smidge of it, and that is true. Uh, another thing, I saw Jesus one night. Uh, he came to me in my dream. I told you the time he rebuked me for not helping the people get across the narrow path. But this was the first time, although I had seen him in his glory um, in hell when he when he went down into the earth, this time he allowed me to see him just a little bit closer, but yet he concealed his the details of his face. Although I could see the hair, I can tell you the hair goes right across where the cheekbone goes. The hair goes right across like that. It goes around his mouth and back across the cheekbone. And it is so thick. And he has the thickest, darkest eyebrows. Very block, block like thick eyebrows like a man would have, of course. But you would think if you were getting to see Jesus for the first time, you would really concentrate on his face. But that was not what got my attention. My attention was locked on his robe. Because the robe on Jesus' chest, I never seen anything like it. It was pleated. It had a it was pleated like this, like like that. And then there was another pleat. And it just kept going all the way, all the way. But it was slanted also. You know how you wrap it from a, around you like this? So the pleats was going sideways. They was leaning sideways like that. I never seen anything like that. And I literally thought that was the most coolest thing I ever seen. And it was only after I took in his robe. Then I thought, oh, let me look at his face. But the Lord concealed his face, uh, the details of it. Like, I couldn't see the colors of his eyes. And I couldn't just see his facial features uh, completely, like his nose or nothing like that. I just was able to see the, the, the color, the skin tone of his skin, and that it was not black nor white. It was, if I guess if you mixed the two, uh, a nice peachy-like like, like color. Uh, yeah. Um... 
So I just wanted to say, the Lord is very liberal with the things that he shared about himself. And if you cleave to him, if you would, if you would stop praying for things of the flesh and begin to pray the heart of God, ask him, what is your heart? God, what, what, what can I do for you? Show me me. I give you free will. The Bible says the potter, the pot cannot say to the, the potter, this, what does it say? The pot cannot say to the potter, mow me this way and that way, mow me this way and that way. But if you would just trust God and say, I surrender, you can do with my soul, whatever you want. And this life, I accept the fact that it's not my own. Teach me your ways, oh God, and I will keep them with my whole heart. And I will walk in them and you can prune me. And I will not resist. You can cut away if that's moving people out of my life. I will not buck against you. If you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to find yourself in that secret place with him. And the Lord is going to begin to reveal things to you. I saw on, it was this past Easter. This is a true story. The night of Passover, which was my first Passover, by the way, the night of Passover, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was at a parade of angels. They was in the sky. And in the dream, it's like I came in at the tail end of this parade because it had been going on for a while. And I could tell at the part that I came in on the vision, the parade was at the end of it. But let me tell you what I saw. I saw angels. I saw angels riding on clouds like a float. I saw, I saw one huge golden angel. It was so huge. Oh, it had to have been about a good 30 feet. And it was laid, it was flying like laid out on his belly, like a, like, like a Superman, like laid out like that. And it was so huge. And in front of this big, huge golden angel was a big, huge golden spear. And in front of the huge golden spear, I don't know, I'm goofy. For some reason, I be so in awe, I can't take it all in. I just be fixated on certain things. So I never even look back past the golden angel, even though something was there. And that it was, I, I can't tell you what it was. Because after I saw the golden spear, I looked and there was two angels riding on a cloud. I'm telling you, just like we have parades, they were, we got floats. They was like, some was on the clouds and some was not. The big golden one was not on the cloud and the spear was not on the cloud. They was just, the spear came first, then the big golden angel. But before the spear, I won't never forget this. It was two angels and they was the exact same size and they was not huge at all. They looked to be maybe like eight feet, maybe possibly seven. And they looked like people and they had on these little white, uh, I don't want to say it was a robe, but it was some white clothing. I can't, I can't be precise. I don't think, I don't recall a robe, but my eyes can't make it out what it is. Cause it looked like it was cut off like a skirt, if that makes sense. But anyway, I realized at this moment that, oh no, this parade is ending and the angels haven't seen me and I want them to see me. I don't want the parade to end and they never look down and see me. Um, and my, oh, I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm leaving out pe pieces. It was people outside. It was people outside, but not everybody could see the angels. Only a select few could see the angels. My cousin was with me in this dream and she couldn't see the angels. And I was jumping up and down and I was pointing. And I was like, oh, is this angels in the sky? It's angels in the sky. Can you see them? Can you see them? And she was like, no, she couldn't see them. And so I was like, look, they're right there. They're right there. They're right there. But she couldn't see them. And so when it got to the two angels that was identical in size, and they actually looked quite identical in the face, I began to shout, all hell, Jerusalem, all hell, Jerusalem. I just wanted them to see me. 
And they looked at me at the same time, and they just did like this. They just nodded their head, and the parade kept going, and I woke up. And I did not know at that same time in the Bible is when Jesus was riding in Jerusalem on the donkey and they had the palm branches and they were singing all oh, hell, you know, Jesus and hell the Savior. And they were just praising him with the palm branches. I believe in the spirit realm as that was going on. It was a parade of angels in the sky and the spirit see we can't see in the spirit. But that doesn't mean it's a whole other world all around us that we can't see. And I was too in awe about that. And so the next day. Uh, uh, it was, two, it would be two days later that it would be Passover and it was on a Sunday. And as I was standing in church and I was telling them about the dream that I had and about the angels and stuff, we begin to have praise and worship. And I started praising and worshiping and worshiping and worshiping. And instantly I was not in that church. I was in a vision in this vision, I was like, I was Moses. I was standing at the Red Sea. And I could tell you the water is blue. It's all blue. It was so beautiful water. And the Lord said to me, I'm about to part the Red Sea of your life. And when he said that to me, I looked down at the water and I didn't have no shoes on. I could only see my toes and instantly the water zipped back in a straight line. It's like somebody took a large zipper and snatched it back. It was like really quick it, and it was clean. Like boom, the water ripped back like that. And when the water ripped back, then it began to rise up and make these walls. I, I, I believe the water ripped back. It's starting at Moses' toe and it ripped back straight. I'm talking about, it was like in a second, like zoom, like really quick. And you can see a smooth straight line as if the Lord literally parted it. And like you part a girl's hair. Like a, that one little smooth line, and then the walls rose up and rose back like that. And after the Lord told me, I'm about to part the Red Sea in your life, that's when all of these, that's when all of these visions begin to intensify and they begin to multiply and God began to tell me things. So I wanted to share with you that God is no respected person and, and that that he do for one, he'll do for the other. It's just that. You have to be in love with God. See, because if you just love God, but you're not in, in love with God, that's like a big difference. That's no, that's like love has many levels. And that's like you, you love your mom, but you don't love your kids the same with the same love. It's on a different level. Or you love your auntie, but if you go two weeks without talking to your auntie, it's not going to kill you. It It's not going to bother you. But if you go just a day without hearing from your boo, that's going to bother you. So when you become in love with God, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. When you, when you get that level, then that's when God will begin to reveal himself. There are so many mysteries in God. It is so, I have seen so many things. And I just wanted to share that with y'all, and I pray that it bless you uh, in some type of way, because it sure blessed me. And there are so many times that God, will, I will just be bawling with him like a baby, uh, the things that he showed me. And I hope it blessed you guys, and and, and, and I'm going to make another video. I'm supposed to be making a video about what God told me about how heaven is run. Um like a court and I just been dragging the ball. So let me do that right now. I'm going to end this video and I'm going to make that video and how he said to pray. And I think that's going to be it for today. I love you guys. God love you. You know what? We are actually the body of Christ, like the literal body of Christ. You know, when he broke that bread and said, this is my body, you know, it was a symbology of his body. We are individual pieces of him. That's why he said, as if you, when you didn't do this to the one, you did not do it to me. When they were saying, Lord, how did we see you and not feed you? We never saw you. He said the same as you didn't do it to them. You didn't do it to me because we are literally pieces of the body of Christ. And I just wanted to throw that in there so that we could love one another more. 
Because when we love in one another, we're loving him. So I love you, and I'll be back. Bye.